friends, and welcome into another edition of the JMAC Podcast. Now, today, I want to hearken back to something that I said before the midterm elections, and it was a warning to Republicans because the Republicans tried to get in office by suggesting to you that inflation and high gas prices were all caused somehow by Joe Biden and that Republicans had nothing to do with it and that something Joe Biden did, like canceling a pipeline or doing something with drilling permits is what caused the spike in gasoline prices. And then something else that he did caused the inflation. And so if you looked at the Twitter accounts and the statements made by Republicans running for office, they blamed all of it on Joe Biden. And I warned you or warned them at the time that this isn't what's causing inflation and higher energy prices. It's not Joe Biden. And one of the easy ways to know this is if you look at international inflation and international fuel prices. And you would know that, for example, the UK has inflation issues that are way worse than ours. And they have energy pricing that has gone up a lot more than us in every country around the globe experiencing high inflation. But they didn't care about that. Republicans knew in their heart of hearts that it wasn't Joe Biden creating these problems. They knew, well, if they understand the economy at all, they must have known that these things were mostly caused by the pandemic and supply chain issues and Yet, they decided to make it all about Joe Biden. And so my warning to them was simple, and that is you need to be very careful. Because if you blame Joe Biden before the midterm for all of these things, and nothing changes, but suddenly inflation starts to go down, and suddenly fuel prices start to go down, well then guess what you've done? You've positioned President Biden to take this incredible victory lap. And my friends, that is exactly what is starting to happen. We're starting to see the supply chain ease up and we're starting to see demand for fuel pricing go down because we're out of the summer. And so we're starting to see gas prices go down. And since you blame Joe Biden for the increase, then guess what? He's going to take the credit for the decrease. Now, there's another issue here, and that is part of the inflation that we're seeing was caused by Republicans. Now, a lot of it was because of the massive spending during COVID. Now, I supported most of the spending during COVID, Because I felt like if you're going to shut down the economy and not let people go to work and not let commerce happen, then the only way to keep us out of a recession was to send money to people, was to prop up businesses, uh, the different loans and things like that. I supported all of that. But I knew and recognized that that would be a source of inflation coming up. But weighing the two, I'm like, we got to keep this economy going now and worry about inflation later. So I knew, and a lot of people knew, that this was going to be inflationary. And Republicans are partly to blame for that. But this idea that one president on the first day of his administration can cause gas prices to spike the way that they did... It just shows one of two things, either a lack of knowledge of how things work or just pure partisanship. And we know which one it was. It was pure partisanship. Now, I'll give you an idea here of what is happening. A couple of different articles that I saw that I want to read from here. This is, uh, let me see, this is Go.com, ABC's product. Uh, It says, an inflation gauge tracked by the Fed slows to a still high 6%, but it is slowing. So does 
President Biden get the credit for this, Republicans? I'm just wondering. I'll quote here, a measure of inflation that is closely monitored by the Federal Reserve eased but remained at an elevated level in October, likely reinforcing the Fed's intent to keep raising interest rates to cool the economy and slow the acceleration of prices. So the other thing is Democrats are going to do a victory lap here and they're going to say it was their their passage of these bills that is going to solve inflation when the truth is it's really what the Fed has been doing. So this partisanship that we see, Republicans blaming President Biden, now President Biden's going to, and the Democrats are going to claim the credit. This is what happens when you convince the American people that one person in the White House has control over our economy. They don't. It just doesn't work that way. Yes, there are things that they can do, mostly to hurt the economy by spending. But there are some other things they can do on the other end, but not much. So I'll read on from this story here. Thursday's report from the Commerce Department showed that prices rose 6% in October from a year earlier. That was the smallest increase since November 2021 and was down from a 6.3% year-over-year rise in September. Excluding volatile food and energy prices, so-called core inflation, over the previous 12 months was 5%, less than 5.2% in September. Continuing to read here, on a month-to-month basis, prices rose 0.3% from September to October, For core prices, the increase was 0.2%. The report also showed that consumers spent more in October, even after adjusting for inflation, a sign of their continued willingness to keep spending in the face of high prices. Spending increased 0.8% from September to October, or 0.5% after accounting for price increases, at the same time after tax income adjusted for inflation rose 0.4%. So President Biden can claim some type of victory that the economy continues to grow when the reality is it's us. It's the American people. Even with inflation, we're still spending. So we're the ones propping up the economy here. Uh, Reading more from this article, many Americans, though, are dipping into their savings to keep up with the rising prices. The saving rate in October fell to 2.3%, the lowest level since 2005. The story goes on to say, in recent months, inflation has eased from the four-decade highs it reached earlier in the year, and most economists expect the Fed's aggressive tightening to further slow prices. Quote, we expect to see a lot more good news on inflation over the coming months. That's Paul Ashworth, chief North America economist at Capital Economics. He wrote in a research note. So is it Joe Biden who's solving inflation or is it the Fed? Well, it's the Fed. Let's be honest. And then finally in this story says the overall economy is showing signs of surprising durability. On Wednesday, the government estimated that the economy grew at a solid 2.9% annual rate from July through September. The job market, the most important barometer of economic health, remains robust. Employers have added a healthy average of 407,000 jobs a month so far this year, and unemployment remains near a half-century low. Now, do you remember the Republicans just a few months ago talking about how horrific the economy was, how terrible inflation was, how terrible energy prices was? Now, you remember they had no solutions. They weren't saying, hey, put us in because we're going to do A, B, C, and D. They were just using it as a way to get themselves back in power. And it's going to backfire. I told you it was going to backfire because they weren't sharing the truth about what actually caused inflation or high energy prices. Speaking of high energy prices, let's take a look at that now. 
Okay, so let's look at gas prices. The headline, gas prices plunged to lowest level since February. Oh no, another claim from the Republicans at risk here. Gas prices nationwide have plunged to their lowest level since February as demand has dropped from peak summer travel season and the price of crude oil has fallen. Now, as far as I know, Joe Biden hasn't gone back on any of the so-called things that he did when he first got in office to adjust fuel prices. If you think I'm wrong, leave it in the comments and we can talk about it. Uh, this article says, softening pain at the pump offers welcome relief for households battered by inflation that stands near a 40-year high. The national average price for a gallon of gas, which stands at $3.47, has fallen more than 30% since it reached a peak of $5.01 in mid-June. That's according to data from AAA provided to ABC News. Over the last month alone, the price for a gallon of gas has fallen nearly 8%. In California, the state with the highest average price, a gallon of gas costs $4.90, though that price has fallen more than 11% over the past month. In Texas, the state with the lowest average gas price, a gallon costs $2.84. Despite the recent price dip, the cost of gas remains elevated, roughly 3% above a $3.38 national average one year ago, according to AAA data. Now, the Republicans wanted you to believe that these high gas prices were a result of something Joe Biden did on his first day in office. Just wasn't true. I think we all knew it wasn't true, but it sure was a great talking point to win an election. And it appears to me that the American people just didn't buy it. I think that they probably had a better understanding that coming out of a pandemic when uh, everybody stopped producing products because they weren't in demand, and then suddenly in a matter of months, they were in high demand and we saw our shipping completely shut down because the docks were overwhelmed and we couldn't unload containers and then we couldn't get empty containers back to their source. And so we had a complete blockage of all of the products coming into this country. And then the demand for fuel spikes. Why? because suddenly we're driving again, we're going back to work again, and we only have so much storage capacity and refining capacity. So if we can't refine enough fuel to be able to put into cars, then the price is gonna go up. This is all just a textbook example of supply and demand and what happens with supply and demand. And I know a lot of people think that they were being gouged by large corporations. And I'm not going to deny that some of that certainly happened. But if you understand how businesses work, if they're not selling what they used to sell, but they still have to pay their core staff, they have to keep the lights on, they have all of their regular expenses still, then how are they going to pay their bills? They have to raise their prices. Now, did they raise them more than they needed to? Did some of them price gouge because they didn't have those issues? Yeah, I think we saw some of that. But in general, when you have supply chain issues, prices are going to go up. That's just the way it works. And in general, the opposition party is going to blame the people in power. That's also the way it works. I just hope that we are all smart enough to know and understand that those people are trying to play with our emotions when the truth is typically a lot more simple and easier to understand. And a test that I always use, especially when inflation happens, is if every country on the earth is seeing the same level of inflation or more, then maybe it's a bigger issue than something that a new president in office just did. Just, my, you know, just my way of thinking. Now, Democrats have started spending 
And uh, we're going to see a result of that in inflation moving forward. So Republicans spend a bunch during uh, COVID. Now we're doing uh, Build Back Better Light. And so that's more money that's being borrowed and put into the economy. Um, you're going to see the student loan forgiveness. That's also going to contribute to inflation. So I don't know how all this pans out in the end, but make no mistake, both parties have contributed to inflation. But the majority of what we saw here recently was from COVID and supply and demand. So hopefully that all makes sense. If you disagree with me, I'd love to see that in the comments. I'd also love it if you take a minute and like and subscribe. If you appreciate the content that I'm trying to bring to you, uh, spread the word, share it with other people. And if you really like it, go to jmcfarland.com and become a member of the JMAC Club. $5 a month or more, that'll help me continue to bring this content to you. And uh, contributions of more than that, you get access to my books and my webinars and all kinds of cool stuff. So I hope you'll check that out. In the meantime, thank you for joining us, and I hope you have a wonderful day.